Good day, folks. Mitch Barnett from Accurate Sound. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video on Hang Loose Convolver, a listening experience. I called it a listening experience because that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to listen and compare a number of filters, first making it easy to hear the difference and then harder to hear the differences as we get into uh, interesting aspects of filter design, which is time alignment of drivers, excess phase correction at low frequencies. All of these are audible when you train your ears to listen, to know what to listen for, and have a tool that level matches the filters and provides instantaneous switching, makes it a lot easier to hear the differences. Here I've got Hang Loose Convolver Host, is the host application that hosts the convolver in standalone mode. I decided to use the standalone mode because it's just easier to demonstrate the various scenarios. And the way I've got this hooked up is that I have J River Media Center. And the way that that is uh, hooked up is that J River Media Center's output goes into the input of the virtual audio cable. And then the output of the virtual audio cable is goes into the convolver and then out to the onboard DAC that I'm recording with this presentation. The sample track I'm using, um, we've heard before in my previous YouTube video on understanding the state of the art of digital room correction. So let's get started. We'll start off with a relatively easy comparison. We'll use a filter that has all of the high frequencies rolled off, and so everyone should be able to hear that quite clearly. So here I'm going to add uh, the convolver, and by default it is a two-channel configuration. So I've got the stereo input coming in to the convolver and, and going out, fairly simple to wire up. And then I'm going to double-click on the convolver, and we're going to load a filter. And in this case, we're going to use the high frequency roll off filter. And I'm just going to put it in bypass mode right now so that we're just listening to the signal without the filter set in the circuit. And then we're going to switch bypass off and listen to the change in sound. Okay, that was fairly easy to hear the difference. Let's try something a little bit different. Normally, um, I'd be saving this plugin, such as, or the filter graph, such as stereo, which I already have one saved, replace that. And the idea is, of course, is that um, when you launch it again, um, everything will be uh, restored just as you had it originally configured. So here we're going to try a new setup. And in this case, um, we're going to try a crosstalk cancellation filter for headphones. So that requires four channels. So I'm going to configure the IO and I'm going to choose quadraphonic. And we're not so much interested in the actual layout itself. What we're interested in is just simply the total number of channels. And so the way to wire this up is simply the left and right inputs, and then on the outputs, left, right, and then the cancellation, left, right. And then we open up the convolver, and then let's add that crosstalk cancellation filter. That's the HRTF. We'll open that up. This filter and demonstration comes with the installation of Hang Loose Convolver. It's also described in the operations guide. So it shows the, the details of how this actual configuration file works. And in our case, in order to get bypass working, I'm going to load a Dirac Pulse. A Dirac Pulse is a single sample filter that does nothing with the frequency response or any timing. It's simply a pass-through filter. 
And I'm using that as the bypass because as we can see here, the bypass button is disabled. The reason for that is that the convolver doesn't know what kind of four channel filter is being used. It could be a biamp system uh, with a digital crossover. And so channels one and two would be going to the bass drivers, for example, and channels three and four going to the tweeters. And of course, if I hit bypass in that scenario, that also bypasses the digital crossover at 500 hertz or whatever it is. What it means is, is that the tweeters may receive a full spectrum or full range signal and that's probably not a good idea. This is for uh, protection uh, that we don't bypass any digital crossovers in, in the system. In this case, we're just simply listening to a crosstalk cancellation filter. So let's go ahead and listen to that. That one is also quite audible uh, difference. Let's get into something that is a little harder to listen to, but still is audible. So we're going to create a new setup. Let's go to these changes. In this case, we're going to listen to a six channel filter, a stereo triamp filter. So here we're going to configure for 5.1 surround or simply just uh, straight six channels and then what we're going to do is wire it up so that we've got the left and right inputs coming in and then we're going to uh, look at the output here I just want to do a little uh, verification I do know what the output is for these six uh, channels I want to also verify it with uh, listening to it so channels one and two are the mid-range crossed over to the high frequency channels three and four at 630 hertz and then uh, five and six are the subwoofers that have a crossover point of 46 hertz and so we may not hear the subs when these get wired up but we'll see before we can listen we have to load a filter or two so here we see that we've got six uh, meters so we know we've got six channels I'm going to go ahead and load some filters and then I'm going to talk about these filters because this is kind of an interesting experiment that folks can do on their own and listen on their system to hear um, these differences. And the differences I'm talking about are timing differences uh, only. And what I mean by that is that these are digital room correction filters and there's they're using exactly the same target frequency response they're using the exact same settings for each one the only thing that's different is whether it's a minimum phase filter or a linear phase filter and whether it's using a minimum phase digital crossover or a linear phase digital crossover so in filter bank one we've got the minimum phase filter with the minimum phase digital crossover what that means is that there is only frequency correction in the digital room correction. There is no time alignment of the drivers and there's no excess phase correction at low frequencies uh, to take care of low frequency room reflections or non-minimum phase response. In filter bank two, it's still the minimum phase filter, but we're using a linear phase digital crossover. So what that means is it's still a frequency only correction. However, the triamp, the three speakers have been time aligned, each speaker time aligned so that the direct sound arrives at your ears all at the same time. 
And in filter bank three, uh, we have a linear phase filter and a linear phase digital crossover. So not only do we have the time alignment, but we have the excess phase correction at low frequencies. And it'll be a, an interesting listening experience to see how people can listen or hear the differences because there is differences between all three of the filters as we'll hear. Even over a YouTube video, you can hear the differences. Even though it's over headphones, it's really designed for the room. So there's going to be some psychoacoustic differences that I'm going to talk about a little bit once we get into listening to these filters and how those translate into the room versus what we're hearing over the headset. So the first thing I'm going to do is compare these filters. But before I do that, as I mentioned earlier, I just want to make sure that all the pins line up correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and play the tune and I'm just going to uh, drag the, the pins over and hook up the sound. Okay, that's the proper summing of sound. Depending on the speakers you're listening to, the headphones, you may not have heard the subs when they're ad. It's very low on level. You may have to turn up the volume a little bit to hear that, but it's certainly there. So now let's get into actually comparing the filters. The first comparison, let's compare the minimum phase filter to the minimum phase filter with the only difference being the time alignment of the drivers using the linear phase digital crossover. So again, minimum phase with minimum phase crossover, minimum phase with linear phase crossover. Let's see if we can hear a difference. Okay, that, that's a tough one to hear a difference. I certainly hear it. What's interesting is, is that if you listen really closely, you can hear that we're going from basically a flat kind of sound, opaque kind of sound. And then if you listen to when it switches to filter bank two, you can hear an increase in the stereo width of, of sound. This is because the drivers are being time aligned and they're arriving the sound, the direct sound is arriving our ears all at the same time. So just for review, let's listen to that um, one more time with that context in mind. This should sound very flat and opaque. This should sound like it's got some stereo width and some depth to it. Very interesting. It's a very subtle change, but it's definitely audible. And if you're listening to the stereo system, it's actually more than a little audible because remember that this is taking into the room acoustics, which aren't available obviously in a headset. <laughs> so, you know, it's um, something to be able to listen for in, in the headset, but the real fun is when you listen to it on your stereo system. Now let's getting into something more interesting and a bigger change yet, of course, let's go from the straight, you know, frequency only correction all the way to the full linear phase time alignment of the drivers and the low frequency excess phase correction.
So very interesting. Uh, let me point something out here. So when you're listening to the linear phase filter and with the time alignment of the drivers, the excess phase correction at low frequencies, if you tune into the bass, the bass drum, the kick drum, you'll hear that it sounds almost like it's backwards. And so I'm going to play this again so that you can tune into that. And what's actually happening there is that in the room, the excess phase correction, which is a time reversal, is reversing the effect of the low frequency ref reflection off the rear wall and coming back into the listening area. And so it's almost like a inverted response that cancels that, that reflection. And so um, when you're listening to the linear phase filter with the excess phase correction in the room, it sounds like the bass is perfectly centered and has a real 3D depth around the, around it with the music and is certainly my preferred filter when, when I'm listening to it. But in the headset, it sounds funny because there's no room where the, the actual cancellation is taking effect. And so that's why you kind of hear both the summed response of the direct sound and the cancellation sound as almost like an echo or, or sorry, a pre-echo or pre-ringing, which it isn't. It is simply the cancellation of the first low frequency reflection and what gives the bass such clarity when listening. Don't take my word for it. Uh, just, you can not only hear it on, on the, this video, but I would encourage folks to download, you know, state-of-the-art digital room correction software that has excess phase correction. And with a tool like Hang Loose Convolver, you can switch and determine with your own ears which you prefer and, and certainly what the differences are to you. So let's just go back and just do a quick listen. Remember, the bass is probably going to sound almost reversed or the kick drum's almost reversed like a pre-echo before the hit. Let's see if you can pick it up. very interesting. I hope you found that educational. I've got one more little demo here that we're going to look at, which is a 7.1.4 Atmos system, and we'll wrap it up from there. Okay, we're over on the Macintosh now. I just wanted to point out that the previous examples of the two channel, the four channel with the headphone crosstalk cancellation, and the six channel triamp system obviously can be replicated on the Macintosh. The only difference is, is that rather than using a VB virtual audio cable on Windows, I'm using Black Hole 16 channel in this case on the Macintosh. Otherwise, the setup is exactly identical. What I have here is a 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos demonstration. Of course, we won't be able to hear the full surround, but the point of this little exercise, while not really a listening demonstration, is designed so that we can check the channels to make sure that each one of the Dolby channels is being routed correctly through the convolver and that we're actually getting convolution on each one of the channels. So I just wanted to thank um, Daniel uh, down here. I've got a couple of Instagram accounts for allowing me to use his uh, music in this demonstration. And also a shout out to Nacho, who is the Dolby Atmos mixer. Uh, did a great job for this uh, Dolby mix. Let's give it a listen and uh, see that every channel is working as intended. Lo hice, te dejé, lo hice y me alejé, llorando y sin pensar. Si...
tiempo malo estuvo bien y aunque a veces me hagas fa Pero si me preguntas si te quise All right, I can certainly hear each one of the channels. The only thing I noticed was that there is no LFE, and so the LFE wasn't used in this mix. Also, as you may have noticed, it's just coming out on the left channel for the headphones. And so that's just a quick test to show that um, HL Convolver can convolve 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos content. And uh, with that, uh, that ends our little demonstration here of uh, Hang Loose Convolver, a listening demo. Hope you enjoy the music. <laughs>